Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day. I do mean over the top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization there on this glorious Sunday morning. That is Sunday, November 14th, 2021. So uh, the little dog and I have arrived back in the sunshine state for the next six months. <clears throat> We will be down here in the Sunshine State enjoying this gorgeous weather. But since it is Sunday morning, uh, this will be my first doomsday sermon from, uh, from the great state of Florida. And I'm going to put this little dog down and he can go. I'm hoping with this abundant sunshine I can read this. I, it, I just found this guy in... Uh, mentioned him in a rant last week uh, <clears throat> Eric Michaels that is E-R-I-K Michaels uh, a doomer that I'd never heard of before but I, I like this guy and uh, he has an excellent website called Problems Predicaments and Technology I think is the name of his website or is that just the name of this sermon? But anyway, <clears throat> this is just a short sermon to give you an idea. Now, Eric, <clears throat> he's kind of like me. He's a, he is not a professional scientist or anything else. He is just a, a, a fellow with a brain who has been studying, you know, the biggest story in the history of mankind uh, for the past several years to figure out that we're doomed. He is definitely a doomer, <clears throat> but we're going to, uh, I'm going to put the link on here so you can go over to his website. I just kind of threw a dart and came up with <coughs> problems, predicaments, and technology, and I love this quote. It's going to, oh, good Lord, guys. This is by Rousseau. <laughs> Uh, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, civilization is a hopeless race to discover remedies for the evil, for the evils it produces. Thank you, Rousseau. I don't know what year he said civilization is a hopeless race to discover remedies for the evils it produces, that uh, he had it figured out. But guys, I'm going to have to move. I'm just going to have to, we're going to have to switch this around because of the blinding sun in the sunshine state. <clears throat> and this, uh, I do want to thank uh, Kind Hearted Tribes member, uh, the artist formerly known as Osama Number 5, for fixing my computer. It took Osama about two minutes to fix this computer. Anyway, take it away, Eric Michaels. <clears throat> we often see people bring out certain ideas that they claim are some sort of solution or that they work. And I want to try to explain why, once again, these ideas are nothing more than ideas and not solutions of any sort. One of the things I most would like to get others to see is the bigger picture. Many people focus on reductionist ideas such as non-renewable, renewable energy or alternative energy ideas such as hydrogen or technological ideas but fail to see how those ideas don't really change anything and only allow for continued environmental destruction and consolidate capital in the hands of the elite. Instead, before I go any further, I should make it clear that climate change and most of the topics in our files is a predicament. A predicament has an outcome, not a solution or answer. Solutions and answers are reserved for 
problems. Many people get these two predicaments and problems mixed up and tend to see predicaments as problems. Wikipedia calls a predicament a, quote, wicked problem. But this does not change the simple fact that predicaments or dilemmas do not have solutions. One of the first things I constantly harp about is technology. Technology has been great for those of us who can afford to use it, but it came at a huge cost to the environment and to us over the long haul. It is our use of technology which continues the exponential expansion of the predicaments, plural predicaments, we face. And it is our insistence upon not only using existing technology, but on developing new technology to solve the predicaments technology caused to begin with. That is itself one of the biggest parts of our predicaments. Hmm. Technology requires three things. Okay, number one, mining, otherwise known as extraction. Number two, energy use, fossil fuel burning in most cases, and of course, number three, the big one, industrial civilization, otherwise known as the entire system we are embedded within and live within. Because these three things, along with technology use itself, are unsustainable and killing all life on this planet, it is technology use which itself is unsustainable. This makes anything requiring technology under today's conditions only capable of further destruction of our biosphere. Technology includes the wheel, fire, and agriculture, and modern agriculture combines all of these. Agriculture is precisely what has caused global population numbers to skyrocket, and it is overpopulation. Com <clears throat> it is overpopulation combined with consumption, which has caused ecological overshoot. Ecological overshoot is the parent predicament causing climate change and most other predicaments we face. <clears throat> Some people have brought up regenerative agriculture in this, and, uh, and uh, Rhett Butler at Manga Bay is one of the big champions of, of regenerative uh, agriculture, by the way. Some people have brought up regenerative agriculture as one of the so-called solutions that they believe will help. <clears throat> regenerative agriculture can indeed work to do things like sequestering small amounts of carbon in soil, but what these folks have forgotten is that it does nothing to stop industrial civilization, upon which agriculture is the bedrock of to begin with. <clears throat> as long as industrial civilization continues, so too does the continuing worsening of the biosphere upon which we depend. This makes agriculture of all types guilty of allowing the continuation of the very system destroying us. In addition, as the climate changes and extreme weather events worsen, all agriculture will suffer as a result. What would it take 
for humanity to experience radical transformation. And then he sends us off to another link. Uh, you know, he has links to all these others. So then, of course, we get a quote from Ishmael the gorilla at this point. Ishmael the gorilla. <clears throat> you are captives, talking about humans, you are captives of a civilizational system that more or less compels you to go on destroying the world in order to live. Thank you, the gorilla Ishmael. <clears throat> Back to Eric. <clears throat> this is where the fault of logic is. It is similar to the smoker who decides to treat his addiction to nicotine with more nicotine in a different form, such as a patch or a lozenge or e-cigarettes or chewing tobacco. The same thing can be said of utilizing different energy resources, energy sources to replace fossil fuels. We are simply treating our addiction to energy with more energy in a never-ending vicious cycle. As long as we do not recognize our addiction, we wind up continuing the hamster wheel in a slightly different form while continuing to cause yet more damage. Don't get me wrong, this isn't to throw the baby out with the bathwater and claim that none of these ideas have any redeeming qualities, as many of them do. Provided the right conditions are met with regenerative agriculture, for example, it can sequester carbon in the soil. In the nicotine example, reducing nicotine intake by utilizing other sources and then reducing the amount of nicotine gradually can help a smoker quit permanently. Ocean fertilization, we've all heard of this one. Uh, I don't see any room for error here, guys. Ocean fertilization can help promote phytoplankton growth if several other conditions are met at the same time, but none of these stop industrial civilization, so the ongoing damage to the environment continues unabated. Until society realizes that technology itself is part of the predicaments in and of itself, will people come to realize that technology can never solve what it has caused. It can only make conditions worse. And then he has... Uh, he has links here. So I'm going to put the link to a lot of uh, videos. Uh, here is a video explaining the demise of our industrialized way of life, the way of life that we consider normal. Uh, here is techno fix futures will only accelerate climate chaos. Do not believe the hype. Uh, here's an interview with, with some climatologists. Uh, here is the myth of the energy transition, the fantasy of electrification. Anyway, guys, it's a, he has an excellent, uh, an excellent website. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to what I'm going to do is put the link on to his uh, his web website also called Problems, Predicaments, and Technology, and you can find a uh, a lot of other stuff by Eric. If you he, he's a you know he, he he takes all of this complicated stuff and makes it keeps it simple, stupid, and. So I am toying with the idea, guys, that I'm going to crank up 
my interviews again uh, on Collapse Chronicles since I basically have nothing to do with my life for the next six months uh, down here in Florida. So uh, if, if, if it, I, I, I'm going to need a little bit, I mean a little bit of technical assistance. If anybody listening to this can offer about an hour a week of helping this Luddite uh, with these interviews, uh, please uh, send me an email at collapsechronicles at gmail.com and maybe we'll get the interviews going again and I definitely want to talk to Eric Michaels. But right now, uh, I need to wrap up today's sermon because it is a spectacularly gorgeous day and uh, we're going to go out to look at some springs, some blue springs. I highly suggest you get out there and enjoy your blue springs while you still can. Bye, guys.